Uh, for, for Fannin, this is kind of his first regular season. He took over ahead of the 2020 season, and the last two off seasons really hasn't been able to get out recruit in person until this past cycle. So he said this is almost like, you know, the first completely normal season he's been able to coach at Iowa State. Opening touch of the match by TCU as the Frogs control the ball, trying to work it up the left side of the attack. Megan Riley trying to play that ball forward for Messiah Bright, but pass behind her. That one chipped all the way over the top. And TC is going to allow Lauren Kellett to go all the way out and collect the ball. Olivia Hassler. TCU being marked closely here. Hassler playing that ball towards midfield. Got over everyone. Kennedy Klotz making a run inside the 18. Klotz looking for space, fires, and then it's deflected out. It'll be a corner. Now Klotz using her speed, trying to take advantage of the turnover right here. Almost gets TC on the board quickly. And Kennedy has a lot of speed, just kind of working her way into the college game as a freshman this year. The coaching staff likes her speed, likes the progress she's made, enough to put her in the starting lineup the last four matches. Corner for TCU, sent to the back post, and that one ends up on the roof of the net. So it'll be a goal kick coming. For the Cyclones. Jordan Silkowitz, the senior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Does that do anything in the right corner? Chris mentioned earlier. Is that doing anything or no? What I'm doing right now. Ball played through for Messiah Bright. Just a little too much pace on that touch. Same starting lineup for TCU. We've seen the last, what, four matches since Eric Bell made the changes against Kansas on September 25th. Klont sliding into the starting lineup up top. And then that back line really remade a little bit with Riley, Hassler, Coppinger, and Hubbard across from the left to the right side. Hassler with the ball. Coppinger, the freshman, plays it up to Gracie Bryant. Hubbard down the right side. Has Lancaster making a run down the right side of the pitch, but that pass a little too far out in front of her. So it'll be a goal kick. I was mentioning Jordan Silkowitz. We saw her actually when she was at Ohio State her freshman year. She was the keeper way back when for the Buckeyes. And then we saw her last time Iowa State was here a couple of years ago. The third time she's played a match here at Garvey Rosenthal Soccer Stadium. Ball played through for Lancaster, who chips it towards the near post. Cleared away by the Cyclones, but not out. Peyton Cruz trying to work her way through traffic. Lancaster again sends it into the six, but no one there for TCU. Gracie Bryan, the nearest Horn Frog, as she was trying to make a run through the middle of the field, but couldn't weave her way through traffic. And Fannin said Silkowitz, when you talk about the culture he wants to build within the cycle, Cyclone program, that's one of the players who is just key to establishing that. So she's driven, passionate, and of course a veteran presence back there. Plays with a little bit of an edge as well. That ball for Klontz. Uses the left foot to chip it in. I believe that's going to be a corner for the Horn Frogs as that one ended up on the roof of the cage. So when trying to get clearance was Iowa State and ended up turning it into a corner for TCU. But Silkowitz will be interesting to see, especially on these set piece type situations. 
Oh, no, the corner for TCU, their second. This one on the ground. Cleared, but not out. I think it was Slater, or Shaylin Hubbard, rather. Trying to keep that one in and ends up as a goal kick. So far, TC has controlled the pace of play here. It's the majority of the opening part of this match played on the attacking side for TCU. Peyton Cruz marked by a couple of players, ends up losing the ball. It'll be a throw in for TCU. Iowa State going to come out in primarily a 4-4-2 type formation with the players up top, Solome Pratt and Kennedy Adams. It's been a team that has struggled to score goals this season. Scored just 11 in 12 matches so far. And they've allowed 21. That's the most in the conference. Played all the way back for Coppinger. Jasmine Colbert trying to pressure the ball. TCU content to try and build something out of the back. Now there's a throw in coming. It's a Kennedy Klotz unable to settle that pass. Pratt, the nearest cyclone there on the inbound pass. Coppinger trying to play that ball through for Lancaster, just a little bit too far in front of her. Lancaster couldn't catch up to it. Hubbard able to run Colbert off the ball. Sis two sisters on this uh, team. Jada Colbert leads the team with three goals, and her sister Jasmine Colbert. Both of them started their careers at Albany, SUNY Albany up in upstate New York, and then transferred to Iowa State. I learned something new when uh, preparing for this match, and that was what the mascot at Albany is. It's the Great Danes. The Great Danes. Usually have a pretty good basketball team. Yeah, you'll see, you'll see their name pop up in the NCAA tournament for college basketball every once in a while. I thought you were going to say that the uh, Colbert sisters were from Freehold, New Jersey, and you learned something about their hometown. Is there a fact about Freehold I need to be aware of? The home of Bruce Springsteen? Oh, I did not know that. I knew he was from New Jersey. Here not the actual town. <laughs> Gracie Bryant with the ball. Hubbard, little two-man game with Lancaster. I think most people think Springsteen's from Asbury Park since his first album or one of his early albums was named that. Here's an opportunity for TCU, and that one all the way across the front of the goal. And a, Iowa State just has to kick it out of bounds. I'm not sure if Gracie was going for goal here or trying to send a cross through. There was not a TCU attacker making a run to that far post. It did look like it was five or six yards away from the actual goal. So it might have been that she was thinking somebody was going to make a run to that back post. Coppinger pushing way up. Able to come away with the ball. Hassler trying to switch the attack here. Hubbard. Riley. TCU. 
very content to keep possession of the ball, as we've seen them do. Now they switch the attack all the way across for Hubbard. Nobody there, a lot of real estate. Hubbard plays it in. Not out. That one is a corner for the Horn Frogs off of Kennedy Klontz. Actually off of Iowa State, but Kennedy Klontz was right there. You talk about TCU being content to maintain possession. That's some uh, an advantage they're going to have over the Cyclones team over these 90 minutes is the ability to possess the ball. Klontz with a low line drive. I think that there's a disparity in on-ball skills between these two schools. Headed towards the goal and in. Messiah Bright, I believe, on the back side of that one. Picks up the first goal of the game and gives TCU the one nothing lead for Messiah Bright. Goal number eight. Frogs made that one look pretty easy. Nice service in here. A header from Coppinger and Messiah. Plenty of space. Almost hit it too wide to the right, but got the bounce off the post, and it stayed across the touchline for the goal. Coppinger credited with the assist, along with Olivia Hassler, on the eighth goal of the year by Messiah Bright. It comes at 11.02 of the match. And that is nice to see for the TCU coaching staff. They have not scored early with much frequency here at home. So getting out to an early lead allows them to change the way they attack and defend a little bit here. And looking quickly to press the issue to maybe get a second. That's something we've been talking about early is trying to counter there was Iowa State. A good job by Peyton Cruz to come back. We've been talking about that over the last couple of games. And TCU has fallen behind a lot of times, 1-0, and they've had to try and equalize in the second half or late in the first half rather than play from out in front. Played all the way down for Bright. Bright with some room on the right side. Looking to get around the defender. Chips it in. Headed away from the goal, but not out. TCU still with possession. And now the whistle blows. Jorge Ramirez saw the offside flag go up. Oh, goal Ooh. kick for Silkowitz. I mean, and we saw TCU get out to a lead on Thursday against West Virginia, but Mountaineers did a good job applying pressure, especially in the second half. TCU really dominated possession in the first 45 minutes on Thursday, but West Virginia had a strong second half. And that own goal we talked about, while it did deflect off of a TCU player, full credit to West Virginia, because at that point in the match, they were really the aggressors. And, you know, soccer is one of those games where, you know, you say they deserve this or they, they deserve that. It doesn't always show up on the score sheet because it's so hard to find goals, but it worked out for West Virginia on Thursday. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they did dominate play in that second half, and you know, even though it went off of Shaylin Hubbard's leg as she was coming back to try and defend, we saw in that second half, Lauren Kellett have to make a lot of saves. I'm talking to Iowa State coach Matt Fannin earlier this week said he thought the team's been playing better recently despite some of their recent finals. For example, against Oklahoma, they were winning 1-0 when Chloe Broughton picked up a red card and the Sooners scored three straight goals. Clouts with a strike from just inside the 18 goes wide. Quant's creating some space here. Well wide of the net. But again, was. we're starting to see her be a little more creative, become a little bit better at creating opportunities for herself as the season's worn on. That ball glanced off of an Iowa State player, so it's 
a corner for TCU. Headed just wide. An opportunity there by Gracie Bryan. And she was just unable to direct that into the corner. We don't see Bryan miss on looks like that too often. Marked by Claudia Najira. Prevented her from getting in a position to really get her momentum moving towards the net. There's not been much in the way of an attack so far for the Cyclones as they have spent the majority of the first 15 minutes on their defensive side of the field. Coppinger. Taken away. But TCU able to quickly thwart Iowa State as they tried to transition to offense. And with the early one goal lead here, TCU can play exactly the way they want to, which is just keep possession of the ball and then look for opportunities. Hubbard plays it wide. Punched up in the air, not out. I believe that was Klotz who switched sides with Lancaster, took that shot from the corner and a long range shot that time by Olivia Hasler. Corral by Silkowitz. And Silkowitz is gonna be aggressive. Not afraid to mix it up, not afraid of contact in the air. There wasn't much contact on that previous save where she just punched it away, but still showing that she's fearless when it comes to getting those away. We quick look at the foul here as Olivia, or Oli Pena rather, goes down. Foul on Sophia Thomas. The freshman. That shot in! Gracie Bryan from the 18 finds the upper right hand corner and it's still nil. TCU. You love to see that from TCU. The Frogs have been needing somebody aside from Messiah Bright to start stepping up and scoring some goals. Brian does it here. No one steps up to cut her off. And she has plenty of space to just let it rip from 18. Strike that Stilkowitz had no chance of getting, just placed perfectly in the upper 90 for Brian's fourth of the season. Olivia Hassler once again with the assist, two assists for Hassler here in this contest to give her three for the season. And we have not seen TCU get off to a lead like this in quite a while. In fact, the last time the Horn Frogs compiled two goals in a game was against Harvard back on September the 17th. That one ended in a 2-2 draw. And if memory serves, they never held a two-goal lead in that match. Messiah Bright also credited with the uh, assist. Yeah, in that Harvard match, TCU did score first, but then ended up trailing 2-1 before ultimately coming up with its second goal. Riley making the run, trying to play that one in. Lancaster, nice touch, gets it back. Hubbard. And Iowa State just plays this one away from traffic. And TCU will win the throw in. And not a whole lot of downtime in this match. Well, TCU is keeping the pressure on. And to build up a little bit of a cushion. I'm sure Eric Bell would love on the on one of these weekends with two matches to be able to buy a few minutes of rest for some of the players that rack up the miles. Olivia Hassler has rarely come off the field this season. She leads the team in minutes. Gracie Bryan, of course, always 
uh, a stalwart on the pitch for TCU. Messiah Bright really battling her way through traffic. Tried to cross it to Shaylin Humbert. That one ended up out of bounds. Throw in coming for Iowa State. Substitutions. Najira will come out for Iowa State. And Maddie Brandt, the graduate student from Maidstone, England, will come in. A lot of international players on this uh, roster for Iowa State. Well, you look up and down at well, Matt Fannin from the UK. Maybe more connections there. Maybe international players feel comfortable playing for somebody that's from Europe. A couple Go. from Switzerland and Netherlands, Canada is also a foreign country. Although well, then, West, then West Virginia might have the most international roster in the conference. That's true. Looking for a whistle, no, not none coming from Jorge Ramirez. He says play on, even though Jalen Hubbard went to ground. Been a relatively clean match so far. The whistle hasn't blown much at all. Seen one off sides flags. We've seen, I believe the only foul that comes to mind is the one on when Pena went to ground. Yeah, I believe that's right. One foul called against Iowa State. That's it. Throw in for Iowa State. Hannah Reed checked in for Olivia Edwards just prior to that last throw in. So Iowa State making a couple of substitutions. We talked about it at the top of the broadcast. It's a beautiful day here in the mid 80s, but I'm sure for the Cyclones, it's probably a little warmer than they're used to. Played all the way across the pitch. Hubbard with a lot of space to work. Gives it to Lancaster, and Lancaster wins a corner. Fannin has also started using a lot more depth since the conference season started. Look at some of the last few games. They've used close to 20 players in a lot of them. So try to keep fresh legs in there. Kennedy Klontz. Sends it into the top of the 18. Hubbard comes all the way back and plays it for Hassler. Peyton Cruz is pushed all the way up. Hubbard trying to chip that one in. Headed away by the Cyclones. Iowa State has not spent much time, not even in the attacking third, but even in midfield for that matter. Got a chance here though. Nice move to get around the defender. As that is Jada Colbert, her shot corralled on a diving stop by Lauren Kelly. Well, she had, she had Solome Pratt making a run on the backside but Kellett able to get up and cut off this cross. She did a nice job to get around Riley. Kellett up to the task of getting in the way of that cross. Nothing too extraordinary. A solid play by Kellett. Jada Colbert, their uh, most efficient attacker. Three goals, 23 shots for her, so she will take a shot when she gets the opportunity. Gracie Bryant went to the ground for a moment. Iowa State trying to put some pressure on TCU. It'll be a throw in for the Horn Frogs. Closing in on the 20 minute mark, remaining here in the first half. A lot of action so far in this first half, if you're a TCU fan. 
Frogs have done a good job controlling the pace and possession so far in this one. We expect that to continue for TCU. And like we talked about, Frogs would love to be able to hang on to this. It's early, but would love to be able to hang on to it and get that win at home because the next three matches are all on the road in conference play. Both Oklahoma schools and Baylor coming up after this for the Frogs. Only one more home match remaining for TCU after this one. Yeah. Hubbard has Klaus down the right side. Klaus. And a sharp angle deflected outside the 18. Iowa State throw in. Font's really getting into the attack today for TCU, probably more than we've seen her at any point so far this season. Off to a great first 25 minutes of this match. When we were talking to the coaches this morning before we started, they said, you know, she and Seven Castain have really stepped up and done a good job in the absence of Skylar Heinrich. Substitutions for TCU. Peyton Cruz is out. Shell Slater into the match. The aforementioned seven, Castain also into the match for TCU. Peyton Cruz trying to weave her way through traffic. And Lancaster goes down. Just the second foul. That one called on Mira Emma, the senior from Wheaton, Illinois. Lancaster has Bright on her left. Lays it off for Bright. Plays it into the middle. Gracie Bryan was there. Pena. Overlapping run down the right left side. That one served beautifully into the box by Kennedy Clowns, who has it back. Clowns gets around the defender. Still with the ball at her feet. Messiah Bright from the sharp angle. Gets it back. Bright. There's Lancaster. She can't finish. As that one was blocked out in front. A lot of traffic in front of the net. A couple of great opportunities for TCU as they look for their third goal here in the first half. Yeah, Iowa State back line did a great job there. I'm not sure that any of the balls ever actually got back to Silkowitz. Like Chloe Broughton in the middle. Olivia Edwards doing a great job for the Cyclones back there. And on that first opportunity for Klontz, I think Messiah Bright expected her to attack herself. That one deflected. And almost in the back of the net. I said almost beat Silkowitz. Kl Klontz took the shot. Klontz again creating an opportunity. To, oh, that one got deflected. A very difficult stop for Silkowitz as it changed direction mid-flight. Nice reaction time by the senior keeper to make the stop on that one. I think it was off of Najira. Hard to see. We're 100 yards away. <laughs> Klontz goes to the bench, but Maybe her best half of the season so far. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you could see, at least today, she's certainly feeling, you know, feeling it today. As she has been on the attack from the get-go. And who knows, maybe giving her the green light to say, hey, shoot more. That's one of the things the coaching staff, when we were talking to them, did mention that both her and Castain at the start of the year, you know, being freshmen, they kept the ball at their feet. They were looking to pass more often than not, and then they were telling them, hey, you, you know, you guys are offensive players. You're forwards. Get in there. You know, when you have an opportunity, shoot it. Don't look to pass it. I'm certainly seeing that from Kennedy Klontz here today. We saw Castain get her first goal on Thursday. 
So message starting to connect for both of them. Throw in for TCU. Hubbard will toss it in. Pena plays it back for Megan Riley. Coppinger. Castain. Weaving across. TC pushing everyone up with a two goal lead here. Lancaster chips it towards the 18. Just wide. Tyler Iskrig with an opportunity there for TCU. So this one come in, settles on her left foot just outside the post. And she's asking, and they are saying it was deflected off that Iowa State defender who was marking her closely. Iskrig will take the corner for TCU. Sixth corner for the Horned Frogs already. Trying to bend that one into the near side. Iskrig able to run it down off the deflection. Iskrig, nice through ball. Pena tried to play that one across. And that one is over the top of the net. It'll be a goal kick. TCU out shooting Iowa State 11 to nothing here in this one. This was a really nice ball from Iskrig to Pena. Not a direction we always see TCU attack in. But a good idea from the freshman. Castain just could not find the frame. We haven't seen Iskrig as much over the last couple of weeks as we did early in the season. She was, she had played 35 or more minutes in every match up until the last four. It's been in the high teens or 20s over those last handful of matches. Substitution during that last break in play. Marina Suter Dorig came into the match. Another one of those foreign players from Barn, Switzerland. She ended up replacing Mira Emma. Pena took that one away. Castain. Throw in for Iowa State. Crowd has filled in a little bit since the start of the match. Yeah, always good crowds here. You've got a great day to sit outside and watch a match, too. Yeah, considerably cooler today than earlier in the year. Lancaster serves that one into the box. Silkowitz coming way, way off her line and slides for it as we take a look at the size of the crowd this afternoon. 74 degrees right now under sunny skies here in Fort Worth. Just a beautiful day. Just a little bit of a breeze as well. We even have them out there on the other side of the fence. Another well attended TCU soccer match. You know, we've talked about it before, Chris, about how big soccer, especially women's soccer, is here in the Metroplex as we take another look at this last foul. Hubbard there 
getting run into by Skylar Reese, junior from Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, and you know, when you talk to other coaches around the conference or even in other parts of the country, say everybody wants to recruit North Texas because there's so many good club teams here, especially up in the Collin County area where FC Dallas is headquartered. A lot of clubs have sprung up around that, and Sting and Solar. Long range. Play into the box. That was, looked more like a shot from a long way off by Hassler. Because you look at the TCU roster, they don't really have to go that far to find high-end talent. Yeah, now Eric Bell and Ryan Higginbotham, Tom Saratori, they're able to extend the range a little bit as well with the success of this program over the last really six years, making it to the Elite Eight, Sweet 16. Brossom with the ball. Plays it forward, but they're able to, you know, now, you know, we, we get to see some of the recruits when they come in, talk to their parents once in a while, if we're down talking to the coaches. But now we're, they're starting to pick up players from the East Coast, from the West Coast, from all over. So even though there are all these great players in the Metroplex, they're able to pick off some really good players from outside North Texas. Yeah, compliment the local talent with a handful of kids from both coasts, like you mentioned. Peyton Cruz from Florida. Slater. Trying to go all the way around the outside. And she will win a corner for TCU. Corner kick, TCU. Defender. Carey. Ended up playing that ball out of bounds. Lancaster will come out of the game. AJ Hennessy checking in. Is Greg takes the corner. Beautiful service into the box. That one over the crossbar. Going to give TCU another corner. Deflected. Deflected by an Iowa State defender, they say. That was that was pretty close. Gracie Bryan got a boot on it. Lois Grigg will have another opportunity here. Eighth corner of the match for the Horn Frogs. Drive to bend it to the back post. Gracie Bryan was there. Just couldn't get up high enough to get her head on it. This Greek does a good job. We've seen it, you know, from day one, really. On those corners, really does a good job of serving them into positions where, you know, her teammates can make plays on them. And we've even seen her score from a, yep. a, off a corner. Yeah, they're just really accurate. Places it where she wants it. We did see one bend into the net early in the season. Castain battling in the corner. And that's a throw in. And having someone on the roster that can deliver those corners is so important for TCU because that's the way Eric Bell likes to attack, is to get out wide and create those chances. And a lot of times those end up going out of bounds off of defenders. Silkowitz, very aggressive, like we like we thought she would be. And she came about 15 yards out of the net to play that ball. DC trying to work the right side of the attack here. Iowa State finally able to play that one out and away, but right to Coppinger. Rossum. TCU able to play their back line way up high. Lauren K. 
Kelly almost to midfield. And until Iowa State gives them a reason to back off, imagine we continue to see the defenders playing up high for TCU. Iowa State really hasn't created a lot of opportunities. There was the one chance when Colbert was coming down the right side of the attack for Iowa State and sent in a cross that Kellett was able to smother. But other than that, not much for the Cyclones. There's a whistle of a foul against the Cyclones. You know, this game has been played pretty much on the TCU side of the field. And with the two goal lead, you know, TCU can play that back line up high like this and, you know, really, it'll be up to Iowa State to try and counter it somehow. Maybe try to play it a little bit more direct, but hard to do that when you don't have the ball. And they can come up and try to challenge these defenders, but the Horn Frog back line is so far been pretty secure with the ball. And the on-ball skills of TCU really on display here today. Coming up on five minutes left in the first half. Coppinger will take up the space. Slater plays it out to Hubbard. And Hubbard wins the throw in for the Horn Frogs. 15 shots by TCU, five of them on goal. Two of them have found the back of the net. Eight corners to none in favor of TCU. The number's just as one sided as the score is right now. That ball played for Castain, who was making a run through the right side of the box. Just couldn't get to it in time. Substitutions coming for TCU. Shaylin Hubbard coming out of the game. Dana Reed will check in for TCU. One of the seniors in this group, grad student from Highland, Maryland. And it is senior day, so I'm sure Eric Bell, especially with the lead, is going to try to get in as many of the seniors as he can for as many minutes as it, he can get them into play. When talking about TCU dominating the stat sheet so far, sometimes it feels like goal scoring in point scoring in any sport kind of can unleash a little bit of confidence or a little bit more aggressive play on the attack moving forward. So maybe that's something that the Horn Frogs can take out of this one, two early goals, if they can continue this scoring pace into the final stretch of the conference season. It's like we said, just four goals in the first four conference games for TCU. Yeah, a little bit unusual and I'm sure the coaching staff and people who follow Big 12 soccer would not have probably predicted that they would have predicted TCU probably a, a lot more efficient in terms of goal scoring just has not been the case the defense has certainly been there for TCU they've only allowed two conference goals both here at home in those draws one against Texas one against West Virginia Two shutouts on the road at Kansas and Kansas State last weekend. The other thing, uh, you know, we talked about it early in the year in a couple of the non-conference games that we did, but, you know, for TCU, there's also a, a learning curve to some degree for the players, realizing that they have a target on their back whenever they are playing a team, regardless of that team's record, this is this is a big game for the other team, so they're going to get their, the other team's best effort all the time and for 90 minutes. Yeah, this is a program that 
the coaching staff has really elevated to being, you know, a preseason top 10 team more often than not in the last several seasons. So teams see that coming in, especially non-conference before the records are there and the games are played. And teams say, oh, we want to go take on the seventh ranked team. That one headed away from trouble, but not out. Settled by TCU. Hennessy! Silkowitz comes up big. Hennessy from about 25 yards out with a great strike. Almost able to find the corner. A lot of pace on it. Saw a little sliver and unloaded. It's a great angle on it here. That would have been awfully close. Not sure if it would have found the net or not, but too close for Silkowitz to take a chance. Here's Greg. Serves it to the far post. TCU comes away with it. Slater plays it all the way out. Iskrig, another opportunity at the service. Punched away by Silkowitz. It'll be a corner for TCU. And to, if you're Iowa State, it's a good thing Silkowitz was aggressive there. There were two white jerseys camped out on that back post. Castain will take the corner, plays it low and out of bounds. Another dangerous sequence for TCU. A couple of scoring chances. Set pieces have been dangerous for the Frogs in the first half. Ten seconds remaining in the half. Sikowicz will play it outside and that should just about do it for the first half. A great first half for the Horn Frogs as they will take a 2-0 lead into the locker room. She does not come out of the games regardless of the score. She's the keeper for the Cyclones. Iowa State possesses the ball first here in the second half. She hasn't missed much time at all in her Cyclones career. This is her 39th career start for Iowa State. There she is, manning the uh, gold nearest us. Now Iowa State, at a halftime, actually has the ball in the attacking third for one of the few times. His coach Matt Fannin has to be pretty happy that at least they're mounting something here to start the second half. Let's see if they change their tactics from the first half, try to play a little bit more direct with TCU pushing their back line so high they might try to just play the ball over the top messiah bright coming away with it here comes messiah bright down the middle bright plays it outside for lancaster a little too much on that ball lancaster plays it right through the feet of the defender but a good job coming back was maddie brandt to take it away from her Grant, a transfer from Rutgers, one of the top programs in the country over the last few seasons, actually knocked TCU out of the postseason a year ago. Shaylen Hubbard plays it into the middle for Bright. Bright settled it, and that strike from about 17 just over the crossbar. And you're not going to see Bright miss many opportunities like that. You can see her reaction after it. She had. A good look at the frame right in front of her. No defenders in between. And the reaction, she just looked up to the sky like she knew she's not going to get a ton of looks like that one. Did a great job to settle it and then turned. Might have been a little surprised that she had that much space to operate that close to the net. TCU playing that ball all the way back. Brossom. Alvarez. TC trying to build something out of the back. Iowa State will win the throw in here. From their own bench. For Iowa State, 
You know, Mark Van and he, Matt Fan and he's looking for something good to happen early in this half. There's the whistle and the foul against Iowa State. And he's looking for something positive to happen early in his first half. Maybe get an early goal, give yourself an opportunity to maybe equalize. But it's been all TCU so far in this one. And there's a foul. That foul goes against Iowa State as Klontz went to ground. Mm. Easy call for the officials there. See the leg just kind of stick out. Trip up Klontz. Set up the free kick for the Frogs. Hannah Reed, the junior from Utah, with the foul. Peyton Cruz serves it to the far side of the box, looking for Messiah Bright. Lancaster. Pena plays it outside. Slater. Goal kick. No foul. Crowd wanted a foul. Slater taken down. And Maddie Brandt marking her closely here. It's hard to see there was a, another defender in between the two players and the, and the camera shot. Hard to see how much contact there was. But the official said play on. Lancaster call for the foul. That's just the second TCU foul. That ball played all the way back to Brossom. Alvarez plays it forward for Messiah Bright. Got past everyone. And Silkowitz will gather it just outside the 18. Broughton. Broughton trying to make a connection through the middle. And it'll be a throw in for Iowa State. Broughton is a player that Matt Fannin is really high on. Uh, she's just a redshirt freshman, so getting her first action here this season. Just said she understands the game really well. Another oh. European product. Yep. Said she's always in the right place. She is the one who took the red card against Oklahoma for the Cyclones, but notwithstanding, still says she's a very talented young player and has to be to break into this veteran back line. The other three players are all juniors and seniors. Broughton plays it back through the middle. TCU marking the ball closely. Frogs come away with it. Play to the outside. Klontz with an opportunity. Fires right at Silkowitz. Klontz with another great strike just outside the 18, but it was right at Jordan Silkowitz. Made a nice move there to get around Broughton and create a little bit of space, but the center backs did a nice job closing that gap to where the only place that Klontz could shoot was right at Silkowitz. There's a foul against TCU. Peyton Cruz called for the foul. Broughton being marked closely by Messiah Bright. Iowa State doing a better job of making some of these connections in the midfield here in the second half. Although they have not mounted anything in the way of an attack, they have possessed the ball a little bit more here in half number two. The ball intended for Lancaster, a little too much pace. Final, Baylor losing at home to Kansas State 2-1. to one. Another Big 12 action this afternoon. So a big win for the Wildcats. TC will be taking on 
Kansas, or has taken on Kansas State already. First conference win. We'll be taking on Baylor down in Waco on October the 23rd. There's a foul on Iowa State as Hubbard went to grab. Get a look at it here. You see the challenge there by Solome Pratt sending Hubbard to the turf. And the other one, or the only other one to watch today is in Austin, Texas hosting Kansas. Lancaster sends it to the back post. And that's gonna be a foul against TCU as Slater charging hard to that back post, trying to get a foot on that ball. Lancaster's cross is actually deflected here and lands in a dangerous spot. Slater going after it hard. Gets tied up with Eva Steckelberg coming down on that backside. Steckelberg, the veteran senior. Actually from Ames. Not a whole lot of Iowa players on the roster for Iowa State. She's one of them. TCU, I'm sure, would. The coaching staff might say it's a little too early in the conference season to pay attention to other games, but a Kansas win over the Longhorns would certainly not hurt things for the Horned Frogs. As we showed you earlier on the, in the standings, the Longhorns sitting atop the league right now have yet to lose in conference play. Oklahoma State and TCU also without a loss. For the two Oklahoma schools, just a one match weekend this week. Substitution, Najera comes back into the match for Maddie Brandt. throw in for the Horned Frogs. TCU trying to move the ball forward. Played out wide for Hubbard. Coppinger sends it to the middle for Slater. Slater tripped up, stays with it. Pena. Lancaster, a couple of nifty moves with the ball at her feet. Tries to get around the defender. Chips it towards the near post and Silkowitz able to grab it with Messiah Bright charging hard. Lancaster's done a nice job here in the last couple of attacking possessions for TCU of getting to that end line and sending balls towards the net. First one was a little more dangerous. Pena almost with a takeaway. That ball played back and almost into her own net by Kennedy Adams. The senior almost with an own goal as she played that away from Silkowitz. She's trying to leave enough space for Silkowitz to get there without having to deal with Ole Pena, but put it out a little too far in front of her. Chipped towards the top of the 18. Not out, Slater looking for some help. Lancaster again to Bright who tries to bicycle kick it. We'll take another look at this almost own goal here. And Silkowitz playing it right back to the defender. And just able to get there and step in front of it to prevent it from going in. Chuck said that it's Adams. Uncharacteristic for a senior to miss hit the ball like that. Yeah, I think she was thinking Silkowitz might stay back a little bit more. 
Here comes Iowa State with an opportunity. They play that ball out wide. Some room to operate on the right side. But it'll be a goal kick for the Horned Frogs. All the way down there was Jasmine Colbert. Messiah Bright trying to settle that one. Peyton Cruz trying to switch the attack as a wide open player. That's Klontz. Klontz trying to beat the defender. Has a step. Looks to serve it towards the six. Messiah Bright double team. Unable to get to it. Klontz again. Lancaster trying to play that ball in the air. Peyton Cruz knocked down. No call. Jasmine Colbert got tied up with Peyton Cruz, and now it's Colbert making a run down the left side. Coppinger comes all the way back to cut her off. Cut the angle down a little bit. Nice job thwarting that counter by TCU. You can see the patience and how calm some of these veteran Horned Frog players are. Even when the opponent's applying pressure like that, Bright still able to keep that ball in play. Kennedy Klaus leaves it for Bright. Just too many red jerseys in front of the net. Got another look here. Klaus kind of lost the handle on it for a the second, giving the Iowa State defenders, defenders enough time to swarm nine. around her as she got closer to the six. Martin Left it for Bright but TCU could not establish too strong of a scoring opportunity there. The Garvey Rosenthal River. Soccer Stadium, 2-0. TCU Martin. with the lead. Under 30 Joey minutes Joey remaining Joey in the match. Both goals for the Horned Frogs Olympia. coming in that first half. Gracie Bryan re-entered the game for the Horned Frogs during that last stoppage in play. Had a goal in the first half. Has the ball at her feet right now. She got a nice extended break coming out of halftime there. 15 extra minutes. Played through for Bright. The flag is not up, and Messiah just unable to get around it. That's the second good opportunity for Messiah Bright. Brian sneaks one through here for her. Nice job by Messiah to stay on side. And just could not direct it towards the net, got under it quite a bit. And like you said, also just not all the way around it. Didn't even get across that front post as it went for the crossbar. So some early action by Iowa State here in the second half, but it's pretty much been all TCU again here as the half has gone on. I think the most amazing stat so far in this match is only one shot credited to Iowa State so far in this match. It was not on frame, and that's it. Otherwise, it's been dominated by TCU. 21 shots for the Horn Frogs. Gracie Bryant with a nifty move, plays it outside. Lancaster chips it. Bryan with the header, and it's punched over the post by Silkowitz. Great opportunity started with those two. Great, Brian started and finished that one. You see her hold on to the ball, hold on to it long enough to draw the extra defender and free up Lancaster, then makes that run to the back post. And a great play by Silkowitz to knock it over the crossbar. Otherwise, that is Brian's second of the match. Corner coming for TCU. Kennedy Klontz will take it. That line drive headed away by Iowa State. Klontz again with the ball. Room to work. Memoli. Bryant tangled up inside the six, and there's a whistle. 
A lot of traffic in front of Silkowitz there. Brian, Brian does such a good job in the air. You see this one here. She's looking for another chance at a header, but just beaten to the ball by Adams. But Brian always dangerous on corners anytime there's an opportunity for a 50-50 ball. And also fearless in the face of contact. And she's one of those goal scorers. That ball gets all the way through TCU's back line, but a nice job by Grace Coppinger to come up and collect it after it got past Megan Riley. Memoli can't keep that one in. I was about to say, you know, Bryant's one of those goal scorers. There are certain people who just seem to have a nose for the net. And, you know, she's one of them. She's not like Messiah Bright, really. You know, one of those people who, who will make a long run necessarily or whatnot, but she's always around the net looking for any ball that may take an errant bounce or whatever. Yeah, you'd say a lot of the goals we've seen her score over her career have probably come off second opportunities, rebounds, almost like a, like a good rebounder in basketball, just knows the angles, knows where the ball may fall, and able to collect it and capitalize. Alvarez had to come out to pick it up, but the offside flag had already gone up. So Azul Alvarez on here in the second half. She, like Kellett in the first half, really not having much to do down the far end of the field. I've seen Iowa State bring the ball into their attacking third a couple of times here in the second half, but no dangerous chances generated off those possessions. Memoli sends it wide. Klontz out there. The flag did not go up, so she was onside. Trying to beat the defender, able to get around her. Tease it up, but took a little too long. Had some space, Chris, but she just couldn't get that ball to her right foot. She would have had to really shoot it left-handed, I think, or left-footed. And really showing off her speed to just outrun two defenders to a spot. Stopped on a dime and able to create a little bit of space. The second defender did catch up to her and block that shot. But you see some of the, just the raw skill that she possesses. It's all on display this afternoon. Offside flag went up. Looked like a great opportunity there for Iowa State. But Solome Pratt was offside. From Tarbis, France played for Toulouse FC. Not one of the clubs that we're used to seeing listed. Nope. <laughs> Turnover. Memoli lost it in the midfield. Jada Colbert. Nice job keeping her feet. Colbert doing a good job. Gets around Memoli and then Loses the handle on the ball. Looking for a foul inside the box. Won't get the call. She remains down on the ground. And now finally gets up. On that last play when Colbert went to the ground and stayed down, he got in a... He, didn't see it in the camera shot because the ball had moved away from it. But one of those great things about soccer, that ball played all the way out wide. Klontz again able to stay on side. Sends it to the top of the six and Lancaster unable to settle it. Macon Riley plays it in. Gracie Bryant trying to go for the header. Couldn't get it. All the way across and out. What I started to say though was when Colbert went to the ground, I think we get a look at it here. Right here we see the contact substitutions for both teams as the now for Iowa State number 13. Colbert Ray went Ray to Ray Ray ground Ray there. She was slow getting up. TCU came away with the ball and TCU players were pointing to the referee trying to let the, him know that the player was still down. You don't see that in a whole lot of sports. No. And bright. 
Usually the players down, they try to attack the, as fast as they can. Yeah. And in soccer, you see the ball given back after an injury timeout. And now a trainer for Iowa State. Thank or you. a coach. It was halfway across the field. I believe it was the, it's the trainer who was trying to go out and see if Jada Colbert was okay after she had stayed down for quite a while. The referee waved her off. Colbert is back up and moving without any noticeable impediment. Gracie Bryant plays it back for seven. Castain a little bit too strong. Memoli lost the handle. Riley, a lot of different faces in the lineup right now for TCU. Is Greek. Had it poked away. Lancaster still in the match. She's switched sides here. That ball comes all the way back to Broughton. Is Greek chasing after it all the way back to Silkowitz, who is standing just a few feet in front of the goal. Takeaway by TCU. Bryant. The on-ball skills really showing up for TCU in this one. Bryant had it deflected. Reed. A little bit of a tussle going on between Jada Colbert and Megan Riley. And as Riley called for the fouls, you get a look there at Isgrig for the Horned Frogs. She was coming up very high to challenge the center backs and the keeper. Another score around the Big 12. 2 nil. second half, Texas leading Kansas. Well, so much for talking about a Jayhawks win would be nice for TCU. That game being played down in Austin. I'll tell you what, Texas was impressive when they were here earlier this year. They looked good. Gracie Bryant trying to get around the defender. Brian will win the corner for the Horn Frogs. Is Greg will take it. Corner well, especially in the second half TCU. of that match against TCU. All the way back on September the 22nd. It ended in a draw, a 1-1 draw, but Texas was able to equalize in the second half and played was really the aggressor in the second half. Longhorns haven't or have won three straight since that draw as well. And that one is it. Headed by Coppinger. Away from Silkowitz. And then deflected in by Iowa State. We talked about these corners being dangerous for TCU when they're attacking the way they want to. That's one of the key ways TCU scores. Iskrig dangerous with the left foot. Right to the top of the six. Coppinger able to get ahead on it and find the back of the net. It was touched by one of the defenders who was stationed on the line. It got past the keeper, Silkowitz. Coppinger credited with her first goal of the year, and it comes in the 71st minute, assisted by Taylor Isgrig. Well, Coppinger. That was a beautiful head or by Coppinger. I mean, that's just the way you draw it up and practice it. So the freshman with her first goal of her TCU career played for Sporting Blue Valley in Kansas City. And she is now on the score sheet. Comes from another market that has a pretty big soccer culture up in Kansas City. That's where the Big 12 Conference Tournament was held for several years. Played outside for Gracie Bryan. 
Under 20 minutes left in this match. Lancaster with the bicycle kick, and she almost scores. Cameron Lancaster came within inches of scoring on that bicycle kick. Well, Sokolitz has had a couple really tough chances that she's just had to touch over the crossbar. This one pops up for Lancaster. And if she was able to get around on it a little faster and maybe put a little more pace on it, that might be the fourth TCU goal. It was certainly under the crossbar if Silkowitz doesn't punch it up and over. And Lancaster is going to come out of the game after that valiant try. Corner for TCU. Isgrig serves it into the far end of the box. And it's cleared away from out front. And there is a foul called against Iowa State. Get another look at this one as Hennessy in a foot race to the ball just goes down. A little contact there. So much momentum moving forward, hard to pull up. Magdalena Keck with the foul out of Austria. Free kick coming. Played low. That one off Iowa State, so it'll be another corner for TCU. Now the corner's really one-sided. This will be the 13th corner for TC. None for Iowa State. Here's Greg again. Serves it to the top of the sixth. Coppinger almost... Got another head on it, along with Gracie Bryan. They were both there, but the ball went over the top of each of them, so it'll be a goal kick. Well, for the Cyclones, the marking on TCU attackers on these corners has not been terribly close. A lot of these TCU players no, getting a, a free team run team towards the net. Hassler will TCU check out for Hassler. TCU. Hassler. One of the Colbert sisters checking out as well. There's a foul called against Michelle Slater. Sixth foul against TCU. They've all come here in the second half. 3-0, TCU with the lead. They've led the entire day. Goal kick coming. Is that ball past the end line? Again, that's Keck all the way down there. Memoli plays it out wide. Castain trying to find his Grig in the middle. Iowa State trying to make a few connections in midfield here and maybe build something up. Instead, they're forced to play it all the way back. Trying to play that one over the top. Coppinger headed it out of the way. Not out, though. Herrera. Nice through ball. A run being made right down the middle that time by Jasmine Colbert. Got a look here. This is one of the better opportunities Iowa State has generated in the second half. But Colbert just not able to direct it towards the net. So Alvarez will tee it up. Remini Tollinson in for Gracie Bryan now. Gracie's played sparingly here in the second half, sat out the first 15 minutes, was in for a little while, but now with the three goal lead. And TCU just trying to get some players, some PT. A few minutes of rest does make a difference. Get ready for this difficult stretch. TCU has coming up starting on Thursday. Chris talked about it earlier, three straight road games. Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, and Baylor. 
Here come the Horned Frogs. Seven Castain trying to serve that one into the middle. It was deflected, but not out. Memoli had it blocked. Nice job by Broughton. As she was able to get in front of it. And T for TCU, the, the week in which they have one match. Great play by Silkowitz. Seven, Castain was in on one-on-one. -on -one. And are they gonna say the flag was up ahead of time? I was surprised the flag didn't go up almost immediately. Castain is beyond the back line, but Silkowitz right at the penalty spot stonewalls her. And then Brant here with the contact goes down, but is up and walking it off now. The flag did not go up for the play by seven, Castain. As they said, she was onside. The flag went up after the foul. Eric Bell looking on us to be happy with what he's seen. There's the schedule for the Horned Frogs. They'll head up to Oklahoma Thursday to take on Oklahoma State. Stay up there, play Oklahoma next weekend. And then after a brief stay back home, go down to Waco. And then here to finish things up on October the 27th against Texas Tech. We'll have that one for you. The final game of the year for the Horned Frogs before they move into Big 12 tournament play and then on to the NCAA tournament. I mentioned that started to mention the the week in which TCU has one conference match kind of comes at a good time in the middle of the conference season. I'm sure, most coaches would much rather have that than have it be one of the first two weeks. So just the one match against Oklahoma State on Thursday, and they don't play again for another seven days. So a good time for TCU to have a little bit of a break. I think I said they were going to stay up in Oklahoma. I doubt they're still going to stay up in Oklahoma for a week. I guess, my, they, I guess they got to go to class. Said, yes, my mistake there. Memory call for the foul. So a free kick coming for Iowa State. We have approached the 10 minute mark remaining in the contest. That one cleared away from traffic out front. Here comes TCU back in the other direction. Isgrig with a lot of space to operate. Fires and hits the crossbar. She caught that crossbar solid. Well, didn't pop straight up or go bar down. Just deflected right off it the other way. Had a good opportunity and a good strike. Just unable to sneak it underneath the crossbar. Played wide. Another big stop by Sukowitz. And again, tremendous pressure being put on by TCU. Tollinson around traffic, has some room, tried to chip it to Hennessy, who was camped out at the top of the sixth. And it's a throw in. Get another look at this shot by Iskrig. Had numbers, but held it, held it. And did create enough space to get a shot off. Hit this one really well. Silkowitz stayed flat-footed. Had that one snuck in, she wouldn't have been in a position to punch it over the top as she has on a couple of other chances. Here's another. Here's a look at the uh, chance here a second ago. Tillits had hit that one really well. Silkowitz coming to that near post to get a boot on it. Throw in for Iowa State. 
Tillotson will play it all the way across into space. Melcher leaves it for Hennessy. Hennessy tied up. Throw in for TCU. Talking about TCU's upcoming schedule for Iowa State. They will have Baylor at home and at Oklahoma State and Texas at home. So not an easy road for them over the next few weeks. Hennessy got around the defender. Sent it to the top of the 18. East Creek had it for a moment. That shot punched over the crossbar. Tillotson with a great strike from about 20 yards out. Frogs are not taking their foot off the gas here in the waning minutes of this one. As Tillotson let it rip from just the top of the 18. Forces Silkowitz to make another great save. Now she has made a couple of sparkling saves in this game. 31 shots for TCU now. 11 of them have been on frame. That one headed away from the front of the goal by Iowa State. Brossom lost it. TCU plays it all the way back. Jacqueline Barnes now in the game for the Horned Frogs. Playing that ball back. Memoli crosses it for Brossom. Nobody on this side except for Dana Reed, who has the ball. Played all the way out to Hennessy. Hennessy being marked closely by Brandt. And now they'll double team her. Hennessy dribbling away the time. And Iowa State just trying to get the ball away from their own net. The majority of this game has been played right in front of Silkowitz. And TCU freshman forwards here, Hennessy and Iskrig, continuing to apply the pressure, staying on this back line, preventing them from getting it out of their own defensive third. We get a look at all the seniors who are on the squad will be honored after this game concludes. Megan Riley, Dana Reed, Michelle Slater, Gracie Bryant, Annika Vatsit. Skyler Heinrich, Alex Fava, all being honored after this one concludes. Sent in on goal and collected by Silkowitz. As uh, all of their numbers painted on the field in front of the stands today. And there'll be a ceremony in about five minutes to honor them and the job that they have done. Stecklenburg in now for Thomas for Iowa State as the clock ticks under five minutes. This one has been all TCU, Chris, from the beginning. Frogs really started out dominating in the first half and have never really let up. The chances haven't been, weren't as plentiful in the first part of the second half, but over the last 10 to 15 minutes, they've really picked up the attack again. When you talk about some of the freshmen who are seeing some action like Hennessy and Seven Castay and Iskrig, you know, they, they're trying to, you know, show the coaching staff that they deserve more playing time as the season winds down. And then, of course, you know, setting themselves up for next year, wanting to show that they. It also gives you an opportunity to build some depth, get players getting some more minutes in. It doesn't matter what the game situation is, it's still a different pace in a match that you can't replicate in practice. So getting some minutes against Big 12 competition. Dana Reed. That's nice with the uh, score the way it is. That we've been able to see some of the seniors who don't see a whole lot of time on the pitch, like Dana Reed, getting an opportunity to play here on a day that I'm sure her parents and friends are here to see her honored when the game is over. 
I think uh, Eric Bell, glad that he's able to get them some playing time today. It feels a little early in the season to start reminiscing about some of the accomplishments of some of this senior class because Frogs would tell you they still have a lot of work they want to get done this year. Gracie Bryan has been so impactful on this program over her four years at TCU, though. And here the coaches talk about, yes, all the players are fit. They can all run forever. They're, you know, college soccer players. But the mentality that Bryan has to mix it up, not be afraid of contact, go in and battle for 50-50 balls, those headers that we just talked about in tight, in close spaces, uh, bring some, certainly an intangible element to this club that rubs off. That one up over the crossbar. And if you're wondering, if you follow TCU soccer, so we take another look at uh, the shot attempt here. A little space, just over the crossbar off the foot of Olivia Edwards. I was about to say, if you follow TCU soccer and you're going, well, how come Peyton Cruz isn't in that list? Well, she was honored last year. She's a graduate student this year, so. As is Messiah Bright, also a grad student this year. It's just for those seniors who were not honored and a couple of the players deciding to come back for their COVID year, so to speak, or their fifth year. And that'll be something that the programs have to take advantage of for the next couple of seasons. Yeah, no doubt. Get an opportunity to get some more experienced players to stay. Also looking at the transfer portal for them as well. A minute remaining in this match. Played wide. Hennessy. One minute. One minute. Outside. Another chance for TCU, and Isgring puts her hands on her head. She knew she had an opportunity there. Probably had more time than she thought. She could have settled that one. And a great pass here by Barnes to get it to Isgring right about the penalty spot. And Tyler unable to connect. And Eric Bell's going to have to be happy with this effort at home, especially. Talked about the Frogs needing to kind of just take care of business here at home a little bit more, and certainly has been the case this afternoon. A dominant performance by the Horn Frogs here in front of the home crowd on Senior Day. That's, That's all cut down. down in 10 seconds. Here 10 we go. seconds Ten. remaining in the contest. Silkwitz will just send it forward. Headed away by TCU, and that should do it as Hennessy will hang on to the ball. The clock goes to all zeros, and this one is over. TCU in dominating fashion come away with a 3-0 victory. Olivia Hassler started it, along with, uh, or rather, Messiah Bright started it, along with Olivia Hassler and Coppinger on the assistant, Gracie Bryan in the first half.